Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's week five of the 5K plan and this is session one. Now it's a mid-tier workout and what we're gonna do is two 10 minute intervals with three minutes rest in between. Now you're gonna do these at your 5K stroke rate and your pace is gonna be run about 5K plus one to three, which works out about 2K plus six to eight if that's all you can work from. Okay, I'll talk more about it when we get in the main session, uh, but for the time being, let's get set up for our four minute warm up. So start off by setting up your drag factor. If you don't know about drag factor, please check out the video on the YouTube channel where I talk about it and give you an idea of where about you might want to set it. Next up, go to the monitor and set it at eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And then finally, your foot straps, set them so they cover the bottom lace of your shoe, or if you're in socks like me, they let you bend forward comfortably at the front without grabbing and pinching and stuff. So a four minute warm up at around about 18 strokes per minute. I'll talk you through it in three, two, one, go. Okay, so just ease yourself into it. Just some nice light rowing. I don't want you to just tickle the machine, I want you to actually roll, but at the same time, I don't want you to panic and worry too much about pace or anything like that. Just make sure you've got your body moving. Okay, so you just want to get your heart rate up for the time being. Don't worry too much about the intricacies. Intricacies. <laughs> don't worry about saying intricacies. Don't worry about too much about the technique side of things, just make sure you're kind of feeling as though this is close to what your stroke should be. In 10 seconds, I'll just look a bit more at what's going on stroke-wise. So one more stroke. And just start to think about what you're doing with your back. Make sure you're do a forward lean as you come in to the front of the machine. And then try and hold that forward lean as you drive back with the legs. And then finish your stroke with a slight backward lean. Again, I'll go through that in the main session anyway. Arms, you want to be straight at the front. And only finish by pulling them in when you're at the back end of the stroke. Okay, so don't bend those elbows too soon. And of course, make sure your power is coming from your legs. But in three strokes, we're gonna take one of those legs out of the foot strap. So take them out, one foot out now, put it on the floor, and then just carry on rowing with one leg in the foot straps. And this really does teach you a lot about your stroke, teaches you about balance, helps you with the compression at the front, but it also just makes you think about the power you're generating from just one leg and whether it's different as you swap legs, which I want you to do now is so to swap your feet and continue rowing. I mean, one of the biggest benefits is just helping with this compression here, especially if you're just warming up and stiff. Just kind of lets the hip flexors just be a little looser for you rather than having two legs in. Two more strokes. One more stroke. Okay, both feet in. Slight bend to the knees, but keep them straight and just body and arms only. So swing your back backwards and then pull in your arms keeping those legs straight but with a slight bend just so you're not locking out your knees so no power coming from your legs all just from your body rocking through your hips backwards and forwards and then pulling in with your arms now let's do the reverse slide to the front of the machine with straight arms and drive with the legs nice straight arms try and just hit the catch at the front of the machine and press with your legs. Don't worry about driving too hard, too far back with your legs. This drill is more about just getting that 
connection at the front of the machine right two more strokes one more stroke there we go so continue moving up and down the rail have a quick drink and i'll explain one more time what it is we're doing today so today we're doing two 10 minute intervals with three minutes rest in between. Now, if you want to set your monitor for this, you might want to set the rest to undefined instead of the three minutes just to prevent any sync issues. That'll only be around about one second, so it shouldn't be too much of a bother. Stroke rate wise, well, I want you to do this at your 5K rate. Now for me, that's 28 strokes per minute. So if you're doing this as a row along, that will be your stroke rate, okay? Pace, well, for that, I'm setting out 5K plus one to three and 2K plus six to eight as the kind of global pace. But what I want you to do is the first interval sit on the back end of that. So that's 5K plus three or 2K plus eight, if that's how you're working. Then on the second interval, if you're feeling strong enough, then you can go a little bit faster. But remember, the point of this workout is that it's a mid-tier one. I don't want this to get anywhere near top. So if you let your ego take charge and go too fast in the first interval and absolutely gun it and blow yourself up then you've completely missed the point of this workout this is not meant to be a top tier workout okay so here we go then with interval one at 28 strokes per minute which in my case will be at 5k plus three okay so i'm sitting on the back end of the pace guide to make sure it doesn't go near top I've said it three times now so hopefully it sinks in <laughs> so let's get ready to go in three two one go so 28 strokes per minute. There we go. It's unlike me to hit it so quickly. <laughs> oh, there we go, 27. Ah, there we go. Right, and then pace-wise for me, like I said, I'm doing this, I want to do this at 5K plus three. So, there we go, that's better. I was overcooking the first 25 seconds or so. I'm now at 153, so whatever your average 5k time is, just go three seconds slower. And if you're only working from a 2k time, then eight seconds slower. Now, you don't have to listen to me about sitting on the back end and keeping it at plus three. You can go faster if you wish. I'm not there to shout at you, but hopefully, now that you're on week five of this training plan, you trust the pace guides and know that it's not just random. It's all part of the design of the week. And maybe you've just picked this workout as a random workout of the day, rather than part of the plan, in which case, I'm sure you probably are going a little bit faster but if you're doing this as part of the plan please listen your top tier workout comes on session three not this one like I said in the intro this is a tempo piece. So you're kind of run about the pace you'll do most of your 5k at. You'll just power along in and around this speed for the first three to four kilometers of your 5k. So it's important that as we close out the last week of the 5k plan that 
you experience a bit more of the sensations of what it'll feel like during your 5k test and that's what today is doing but without taking you to the kind of limit point that 5k will so four minutes gone you should be nice and warm by now hopefully you're like I said powering along at your 5k stroke rate and pace but it's a good time to just do a checklist of your technique as we get closer to the halfway point of this row so I like to start with either back or arms let's do arms today and then back and then arms so the key thing with arms is to get them straight when you get to the front of the machine okay and then keep them straight through the leg drive until the legs are done and only then once the legs are done do you pull the handle in to finish the stroke <clears throat> and then you send elbows through your sides squeeze shoulder blades together a nice powerful finish with the handle four minutes to go but it's not just about keeping the arms straight at the front it's about relaxed shoulders, relaxed arms, fingers like hooks over the handle, thumbs under the handle, lightly touching your index finger, not squeezing the life out of the handle. And then the last thing, well, second last thing, is the return of the handle. Once you've pulled it into your chest at sternum height, I want you to release it at the same pace and the same height so the chain should be relatively level from drive to finish to return but the key is to get the handle away from you at the same pace you brought it in at to help the stroke rate two minutes to go but also to get the handle over your knees before your knees bend to start your recovery up the slide it's all about 
momentum of your body which I'll explain more in the second interval when we cover the rest of the stroke but there's not much point going in deep on the next bit when we only have just over a minute to go just make sure that the handle engages and the power surges through it and then your arms stay at a level height so you're not either too high or too low which can cause posture issues and then always remember the powerful finish is at the end so you don't pull from the start you hang on from the start you pull at the end okay four three two one oh. get the feeling this three minutes is going to fly by is it too late to change it to four <laughs> no three is what it is three will let you recover uh, so you'll still be activated as you start the next interval but you're not going to be like this heavy breathing and feeling the burn in your legs but what it means is whereas before you were say you were starting at 20% active then as you start the next interval you'll be closer to like 30% active so you'll get up into that mid-tier kind of effort point quicker in the next interval than you did in that one so this is why I said to just stay on the back end I was actually a good boy there I finished 153.1 so it was a tiny tiny bit too slow but actually considering how I finished and how I'm fine like this and it didn't feel like a top I'm quite happy with just being 0.1 off my actual pace hopes so if you were to do that first interval at your 5k pace or even like 5k plus one chances are you're in a much worse state than I am right now so the next one's going to be a lot tougher and you're likely to go up into uh, feel as though you're in the top tier as though you're in the middle of an actual 5k test and we don't want that we all we want is for you to feel the pace of your 5k test but not actually feel the full-on intensity of one okay caveat caveat <laughs> I'd make that this week's or this session's hashtag but that's a bit negative caveat people will be like oh no what's he said this time okay 50 seconds to go make sure and have a drink before the next one and don't let don't let dehydration defeat you and so choose what you're going to do next I mean I'm still going to hold my 5k plus 3 pace I think this is going to keep it a nice mid tier workout for me if I do that ready for session 2's bottom tier and then session 3's top tier so I don't want to damage myself damage my cardio system ok if you did do undefined rests then please press your button ready for the next interval which starts in 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go the same again 28 strokes a minute and whatever pace you've decided is your best one to keep you at mid now, I don't even want you to do a cheeky sprint at the end or anything I just want you to keep this at tempo 
assuming you're going to do a 5k test a few days after you finish this plan you're going to have time to do long and tough soon so just finish out this training plan sensibly with me and don't burn yourself out before you get a chance to do your actual test that would be a bit senseless now make sure think about those arms nice and straight at the front good powerful finish at the back and then once you've got that locked in you can start to incorporate attention to your back now we spoke about this in the warm up leaning into one o'clock at the front of the machine holding it as you drive with the legs and then once your leg drives about halfway done that's when you rock your body, your back through your hips into a 11 o'clock angled layback and then that's when you pull in your arms but then with the handle return that push away from your body is what engages the rock forwards again so by the time your hands are over your knees nice and straight your body rock should have completed also it's all about fluidity of motion using your body's momentum to carry you through each phase of the rowing stroke so hands away body rock so that you're at the right body lean forwards by the time you get to the front of the machine and you're not tempted to over lean over stretch because you're still rocking forwards on the slide and then posture at the front you should be up on your sit bones so that your shoulders are past your hips because of that lean forwards a nice powerful primed posture halfway there primed for the power to flow through it and then similar at the back of the stroke strong posture braced 
core which will help that hip rock forwards rather than trying to do it from a slumped lower back you're just hinging forwards then the seat slide go far enough that your shins point vertically try not to go too far past that and I don't want the seat to be clattering off your heels because you're sliding forwards with a poor posture but again if you can't reach that vertical position it could be a flexibility issue <laughs> so the trick is to put a post-it note on the rail at the point where you slide forward enough for your shins to be vertical this is in between rows work that out and then in your actual rowing sessions try to roll forwards enough to feel the click every time the rollers touch that post-it note <laughs> and eventually it'll become second nature and then the last thing which is actually the most important thing is to initiate the drive from your legs I'll start with that tomorrow or session two so in at the front straight arms lean forward vertical shins and then push the machine away one minute to go come on feel the surge from your legs <clears throat> through your body into your relax shoulders and arms and into the handle and that has had the power gets into the flywheel okay almost there five four three two one oh. I was definitely tickling top not quite there and again you have to remember I'm rowing at my actual training pace 
while talking to you. So I do find it five to 10% tougher heart rate wise than when I do this on my own. But I decided I didn't want to back off pace anymore because as I'm getting stronger, I don't need to guard my shoulder as much. I'm able to train at the right pace with you guys. Right, two minute cool down. I think so. In three, two, one, go. Oh, now you can tell uh, by my breathing that that was definitely a mid tier workout. Again, I wasn't absolutely exhausted and rolling around on the floor and that's that kind of total exhaustion of muscles and or cardio is how I define the real top tough sessions so even though that might have felt tough it's still a mid tier and hopefully the 20 minutes of tempo you just did will be round about the duration of your 5k maybe plus or minus two minutes three minutes so it will definitely have helped your fitness during the actual 5k test itself especially because you know you can do it you could do those first 10 minutes easy well maybe not easy but you didn't have to stop when we got to the three minutes rest so you could have kept on going and that's the point of the 5k as you then keep going at that pace for like six seven minutes more and then your final 1k is the one that you then smash faster so that's what this week's about getting you primed for when you do your 5k test I'm stopping there but you carry on going I'm not going to do what I did in the 2k test which was the last week be a taper week I'm just going to go for the full training and let you be sensible about tapering and when you're going to do your 5k what I recommend is do session 5 have a day off do a kind of bottom tier um, kind of say 20 minutes at 20 strokes per minute 2k plus 18 with like two minutes of your 5k pace and rate at the end of it just to get your body all stirred up and then the next day do your 5k test okay that's how i do it anyway you don't have to follow me you can do what you want we're all grown-ups here anyway so that's the end of session one in the final week of the 5k plan i do hope you enjoyed it uh, whether you're watching this on youtube or whether you're listening to it as a podcast hopefully it all makes sense and you agreed with the intensity of this row i'd love it if you left me a comment obviously if you subscribe to either the podcast or the youtube channel or if you went and checked out rowalong.com which is the website for all of this where it lists the plans that we're doing and you can buy t-shirts on there as well so it'd be nice to see you on there but it's always nice to get the comments on youtube as well so all that's really left is the hashtag um let's just have hashtag final week final yeah i'm not gonna say last week because i don't like last final sounds more empowered last week says so no last week whereas this is final week so it's the final week of the plan so that's what the hashtag is so use that just to let me know you got this far because it always amazes me that you actually make it this far one of these days i'm just gonna sit and read a book just read it out loud and wait and see who who waits to the end or like halfway through put it in a word so you can't just skip to the end that'd be mean wouldn't it anyway thanks once again i'll see you in session two be well bye-bye